What's up, period four? We've come to the end of all our practice, and I hope it's benefited. We've we've figured out a lot of things that we can focus on. And last week's questions were tough at times, but I would definitely think of them as an opportunity to learn some last-minute things. So just a quick review of them. You can see them all here. You can pause the video if you feel like you need to. But the definition of open and close, from what I can tell when, I, when I've when i read their definitions of open and close, really all they say is an open system is when external forces uh, act on the defined system. So again, if it's just a falling rock, well, yeah, there's external forces because gravity is acting on it. Some of you mentioned air resistance. I would keep that out unless it says otherwise. Usually you can ignore air resistance. Closed systems, that means there's no external forces acting on the defined system where all the forces are internal. So if it's a falling rock and the earth in the system, where are there any external forces acting on rock and earth? No. Again, assume no air resistance. All those forces are internal. So keep that in the back of your mind if they ever bring up open versus closed systems. Basically, are there external forces act acting on the objects defined as the system? Yes or no. Some of you looked up a definition online for what it is and started talking about mass loss and energy to the surroundings. I would not go there. I've never seen an answer that's related to that. It's just about external forces. And also, just as a, a reminder, if you see a collision, odds are you're going to have to do conservation momentum. Like keep that in the back of your mind. If you're not doing that, you're insane. Also, elastic collisions. Some of you wrote some stuff that was not really true or necessary. Bottom line, kinetic energy is conserved, and that's all they care about. Now, you may not have to do all the math like in the last question uh, this past week where they actually wanted you to quantify it and compare it, but if it's an elastic collision, for example, you drop a ball. If it's elastic, that means when it hits the ground, it'll have the same kinetic energy when it hits and when it leaves or it bounces up off the ground. That means if it has the same energy hitting as it does when it comes off the ground, it should return to the same height. It's not about conservation of potential energy, but in the end, if you're conserving kinetic energy in that scenario, you'd be conserving potential energy. Also, you remember beginning of the year when you, some of you forgot about projectiles? Don't forget on the test. If you see a drawing with a parabolic path and height and horizontal distance, it's a projectile. You own those questions and they are usually horizontal, usually. So on the last question, I believe on the second FRQ, some of you went your own direction and we've done things like this in the past. So just, just to bring this up, if you're given an equation and they ask if it makes sense, just focus on the equation and see if it makes sense. Some of you did other math, derived new equations, compared them to what you did. That's not what they're asking you to do. They simply wanted to know, hey, if the mass increases, the velocity increases, does that match what your graph says? Yes or no. The other one was, if the distance increases, what happens to the velocity? According to the math, it would get smaller, but that doesn't match the actual scenario. That's all they're asking you to do is just, does the math match the scenario? So do things like increase this or decrease that variable and see how it affects the other side of the equation. And if you're given multiple equations, which we were done in the past, uh, it had to do with the torque and the oil being dropped on the spinning disk. Just compare them. Again, a good strategy is to increase towards infinity, see what happens to your equation if it makes sense, or decrease to zero and if your equation makes sense. And insane people, if it doesn't mention time, you shouldn't do energy. Like none of the equations in energy have time. So, so keep that in the back of your mind, please. I realize that some of you said that if the distance between the bumps increases, technically you're starting from a higher height, so you have more potential energy. But that's, again, th this was all about this particular question. They gave you a graph of velocity versus time. So this is, if you increase the distance, you have more time between bumps, not more potential energy. So please keep that in the back of your mind. And one last thing, some of you are not reading the questions carefully, and I realize that you're going to be you know, in the middle of a test, and you know time's going to be an issue, but read them carefully, because some, uh, some people didn't. You kind of like went off the map. So other than that, 
I hope this these these tests have been a good learning experience, and we've we've tucked away some nuggets and some strategies that will help you. But I do have some um, final suggestions for this week. All right, so here are some last minute suggestions. If you have not taken the practice test on the College Board website, which you actually enter your password as practice, and you go through the process of practicing, uploading, and responding to questions, you need to do that. This way you'd be familiar with it and you're not panicking while it's happening. Like, what do I do? You need to do this ahead of time. You know, if you ever gave a presentation to class, you don't just walk in and present. You probably practice it a little. It's the same thing here. Just practice. Make sure that you can upload and everything will go smoother. And also you need to decide if you're like, what's your plan? Are you going to handwrite your answers, take pictures and upload them? Are you going to copy paste? Like you're going to write something in a Word document or a Google Doc and copy paste your answers? Or are you actually going to upload your Word, excuse me, or Google Doc actual file? You need to decide ahead of time. And again, if your handwriting is questionable, you know who you people are. My handwriting is not great either. But if it's going to be questionable, I would not handwrite your responses. They don't care. If they can't read it, they won't. Very important. You want to get all your materials ready beforehand. So you want to have your equation sheet. If you want to keep out extra practice tests, you can. You, I mean, it's basically, it's open note. So you can have without whatever you want. But searching for answers through old tests is only going to waste time, and time is valuable. So keep that in the back of your mind. But also when you get your materials ready, so if you know that you are going to be uploading pictures, well, then you might want to do the paper ahead of time. I believe they said that they, you should put your name on each piece of paper, your electronic ID, and the page number. Like You want to get this all ahead of time. If you know you're going to be creating a Word doc and up, uploading it, create these documents ahead of time, FRQ number one, and have your name and your, um, your electronic ID on every page. Do this ahead of time so you're not doing it during the test. Get prepared to take the test. Want to stress this. The tests are long on purpose. We were told many times that they want to give everybody an opportunity. If you can answer more, great. Keep answering. If you run out of time, whatever. They did this on purpose. What's most important is that you upload your responses. So when it says upload, just upload. Don't be like, oh, I, I just need like three more minutes. What you need to understand is if you don't upload, it's a zero. So if I didn't mention this in a previous video, they did say as long as it starts to upload before the time runs out, you're fine. It doesn't have to finish uploading beforehand because everybody's Wi-Fi will be different. So they apparently will know when you start to upload and that's what's important. So don't shut down your computer at the end and be like, yep, I'm good. Let, let It may still be uploading. I think you're supposed to get a confirmation at some point that everything was uploaded. So bottom line, tests are long. When, you, when, it's, when it says to upload, please do so. We'd hate to you know, get a bad grade because you didn't upload. That's just silliness. And remember, you are on your own. Don't contact me or Ms. Qualshi during this, this test. Uh, I talked to her the other day. We're both stressing out because we, we're worried it's not going to go smoothly or something bad will happen. Like, I don't know. But remember, you can always, if something does go wrong, you can fill out the form for a retake. And I guess, above all, relax. I, I mean, I know it's tough. It's just an AP exam. This is not a final exam in our class, which would count for 10% of your year grade. It's a question of whether or not you might get college credit. What if you don't get college credit? Oh, well, you didn't get college credit. You're still going to college. It's going to be fine. And even so, maybe you get a five. Does your college accept that credit? Would that college be like, okay, well, now you don't have to take physics one. We're not going to give you credit physics one, but we want you to start at physics two instead. Personally, I would say, no, thanks. Let me take physics one and get an A. And another thing, you are very well prepared for this test. I I'm not blowing sunshine anywhere. I'm being serious. You are well prepared for this test. You've practiced enough. And 
Honestly, if if you've been usually getting fives, then you're probably going to get a five on this. If you're usually getting fours, same thing. Usually getting threes, same thing. The way you've been doing all year is probably how you're going to do on this. Hit or misses, or sometimes you're a five, sometimes you're a three. Then let's say maybe it'll be either one or a four. But please, just relax. This test is not definitive of anything other than the fact that you may or may not receive some college credit. It's okay. Also, remember, I want you to do super well so that we can crush the other classes, but that's just between us. So anyway, if you have any questions between now and Thursday, the day of the test, please let me know. If you have any concerns, please let me know. I'm stressed out too because I just want to make sure you have the opportunity to do the best you can, and I hope I've prepared you well, and and that's what's worrying me personally. But anyway, as I ramble and waste your time, I hope you're all safe. I hope you're all healthy. And that's about it. So take care of yourselves.